What's up guys, Jeff Cavalier, AthleanX.com. So today we gotta talk a little bit. We gotta talk about science in strength training and how there's a, a great deal of focus these days on science and strength training. And it's a great thing. You guys know I'm a big believer in it. I say here, we put the science back in strength. I'm a big believer in letting science help us make better decisions of what we do in the gym. That being said, I think we need to start putting a little bit of, not the science back in strength, but sanity back in science. So let me explain. So you probably know a member of the PubMed posse, right? The people that will, are quick to throw a PubMed article or research article at you as the basis for why you're, everything you're doing is wrong and everything they're doing is right in the gym. It's, it's a growing posse and it's one that needs to be sort of cut, have their legs cut out before it grows too large. Because the problem is in focusing solely on the science of training, you are pretty much ignoring one of the most important other aspects of it, the other 50%, and that is the practical application of what the science is trying to tell us could be true in the actual weight room or in the actual application, doing the work itself. And that is where I think people are becoming too exclusive. They're either one or the other. And in order to be effective, you're gonna have to be both. In the days ahead here, as we get better and better at what we do, you're gonna have to be both, have your feet in both areas in order to be able to do this the best. And as a physical therapist and a coach, I have a great opportunity. I was given a great opportunity to be able to have myself in both places so that I can see, I pour over the research all, the, all day long, but then I actually get a chance to see it across many different body types, many different levels of athleticism, many different genetic potentials, we could say, many different people, people of different muscle fiber types, people with different body compositions. So we can take all of what we see and then actually apply it. So now, when we look at a study though, here's the problem with even just regular studies. Two things really. If all you do is read the abstracts, you're probably not getting the full intent of what the researcher was trying to communicate in the first place. And a lot of us, I know, we're lazy. We want to read the abstract and go right on to the next thing so you can quickly go post it on Instagram and let somebody know why you're doing what you're doing. But if you read the abstract only, you're missing the part in the uh, explanation down in the conclusions and leading even up to that, even the selection uh, of, the, of the subjects and how they go about the subject selection, there's a lot of disqualifications that are made and a lot of other alternative explanations that are presented. It's just that in an abstract, you kind of have to come up with, okay, but what is your conclusion? And the conclusion then is more cut and, cut and dry, black or white, whereas there's a lot of gray built in to the actual full article that's never read. The second thing is the actual conducting of the experiment. You have to understand that most of this research is being done on college students and finding subjects, reliable subjects, is one of the most difficult things that any researcher could ever do. And even if you're te testing somebody, the context of which could be testing heavy weights versus lightweight training, and which one is more effective. You get your subjects in there, they show up, they train, they do everything you want them to do, and then they leave, and one guy goes off and gets absolutely freaking tanked that night. Okay, the next guy has a philosophy uh, test the next day. So he goes home and studies, he gets to bed early. He comes back nice and early, ready to go for the next day of testing. And then the other guy, uh, who knows, he goes and he finds out what Pornhub is for the first time in his life. He never even shows up the next day for the, for the test. So now what are you doing with your subjects? Where is the control there? And is it the same person that showed up that day? So if we're testing performance and training, heavyweight versus lightweight, and each one of those people did, had a far different experience from the moment they left the lab, you're not gonna get the same performance the next day, and that can completely skew what's going on, especially from a nutritional standpoint, too. I know in dealing with some of our local researchers here at one of our universities, we know that selecting subjects is one of the most difficult things because even if we're trying to train something or, or, or study an aspect of training, we can't control what they then go and put in their mouth, at least not with a surety, and, and, and certainly not when we're talking about younger kids, okay, and not knowing exactly what they're gonna do. And I will tell you this, one final point here, even from a pro athlete standpoint, we can give them the best program, the best structure, everything we can do to arm them in the off season to go get what they need to do done, but we can't be there with them every single day, 
feeding them and telling them what to do. So if somebody comes into spring training out of shape, guess what? It's not something that we really could have prevented. All you could do is try to call, make visits, try to stay on top of them, but it's ultimately going to be up to them. And what I'm going to tell you is it's ultimately going to be up to you to determine what is working. Read what you want to read. Find the things that are interesting. New research is coming out every single day. There are some very smart people out there doing some incredible, incredible research. But take what's said and try it. Put it to practice. Fill in the other 50%. Do what you know you need to do to test what they're saying and see if it works for you. Because it may or it may not. And make sure that in your condition, if it's something that is working for you, always be open to new ideas that something else might come along that might work better for you. Or even what was working for you now may not be working for you the best in the days ahead. So guys, let's put a little bit of sanity back in science. It's a little bit of a rant. I had to kind of get it off my chest, but I think it's really important because I am a big believer in it. I'm a big believer in the value of putting science back in strength and letting it guide us where we go and get smarter and get better at what we do. All right, guys, I'll be back here in another day, a couple days. We actually have a warm up video coming here for you shortly. In the meantime, make sure you leave your comments and thumbs up. Let me know what you want to see here. And if you're looking for a program that puts the science back in strength, as we do with all of our training, head to athlinex.com right now. Click the link below this video. Use our program selector to determine which program is best suited to your specific goals, the one that's going to help you to get to your goals the fastest. All right, guys, see you soon.